back in there, putting stuff away, figuring out, oh, this piece of furniture from the old place, does it fit now, does it go? <laughs> um, uh, luckily, a lot of it really works perfectly, I think, because my design kind of stays true through over the years. Um, but uh, it looks great and uh, very happy to finally be getting in the space. It's been uh, since I purchased the home in October, I started construction in like the beginning of November. And um, so, I mean, rel this was a full gut, uh, relatively moved pretty quickly. Um, the COVID-19 situation definitely slowed things down. Um, at the end here, maybe getting some of the materials a little slower and, but look, we're, we're getting through it. I have my first responders hat on cause always, uh, trying to support the people that are doing so much for us. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It just feels great to see the entire home come, you know, to the full realm of what I thought it could be. Um, and it feels great to be inside. Well, and I love that. And I want to, I want to jump right into it because you and I spoke last week and, you know, I, I think it's, it's so, I, I love talking to people, designers, architects who were, are working on their own projects because so much more goes into this and you have not been living in, in your own home for a while. Where have you been for the last few weeks? Um, I've been, I've been at my in-laws. So it's, it's a full family affair. We, uh, we have my wife's grandmother, so my, my daughter's great-grandmother. We have her parents, my two girls. You know, it's, it is the dream. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know about that. But when, <laughs> when we spoke last week, we talked about this, and I was excited and anxious to get back in touch with you to find out, as you planned this, now you're living in it. Now you've moved into it. Is, is take us through the scope of the project. Take us through this project. Sure. When so I first saw this house, my realtor, who's a good friend of, of mine, and she she uh, sold my last house. I actually bought the property from her that the house that I built there. So I, I we've done a lot of real estate tr transactions together, and she told me about this house, and she's like, John, it's a great piece of property, small, quiet street, uh, not many homes on it. And um, she's like, I think it's right up your alley since it's a, it's a ranch. It's, it's got a mid-century modern look. Price point was good. She's like, but there's so much potential. And she's like, I know if you walk through it, you'll be able to have that vision to really see it. And when I first came, first things first, when I go into any home that I'm looking to purchase, my first stop is the basement. I don't even, honestly, I do not even go to any of the other rooms. I don't go anywhere. I just go, I don't even want to see it yet. Just take me downstairs in the basement because when i walk into the, into a basement of an older home because i've done so many construction projects um of renovations in older homes i know what to look for as far as cracks and making sure the foundation's okay um seeing that the bones of this house are, are really stable and uh it was immaculate in the basement no cracks anywhere um very neat uh, higher ceilings than the normal in, in New Jersey basements for even an older home like this. And uh, as soon as I saw the basement, I was like, yes, this is, this is definitely going to work. And then I walked through the house, of course, and, and the space planning wheels started going. If I take this wall down, this wall, this wall, open up the space, how, how can it look? Um, and that's kind of how my mentality goes with any of my projects. That's why I, I really like go to the basement, see how things look, and then I come upstairs and and the whole thing comes together. This is interesting too, because it's your own, your own project and you're not the only one that lives there. So yeah. you, had, you had some interesting, I don't, they're design challenges. All designers, whether it's your own project or somebody else's, you're gonna have challenges. It starts with the psychology, right? It starts with the taste. It starts with the style. You had an interesting, um, you had to have some interesting conversations with the client, your wife, between, <laughs> between traditional, and modern. How did, yes. how did you wind up with the style you wound up with? So very interesting. So when we built our first home in 2000, that was in 2014, 2014, 2015, we, we, we built our first house together. That was, we were just married for uh, a, a year and a half, somewhere around there, two years, somewhere like that. I think any of us that are married, we know you're, 
you're still, even though we dated for a while, we're still getting to learn each other um, as things get much more serious and you're buying homes and talking about kids and all those beautiful things. Um, you know, she knew my style, but I really didn't know her style 100% yet. So when I did that home, I leaned much more heavily on the contemporary modern look. And as we were going through, she kind of, she let me, she's like, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Cause she knew that's what I did. But at the end, she's like, I really didn't like that. Or I didn't like this. I didn't like, you know, and I'm like, okay, why didn't you tell me? She's like, well, I just thought, I'm like, but you got to talk to me. I don't, you know, I'll go with what I love. Not saying that's going to be what you love. So this time around was a lot easier because I knew she definitely loves more traditional and rustic, which I like also. I, I do like those. But my first mentality is definitely to go more contemporary modern. And she balanced me out because I would start to push in certain areas. And then she's like, she's like, mm, nope, that's not going to fly. You know, or, you know, th th this style uh, cabinet in the kitchen or this, that, the tile, different things. She's like, we got to pull it back. So I pulled it back in certain ways and uh, other ways I, she let me go. She's like, yeah, she's like, do it. She's like, go for it. I, I, I like it. So that was the, the balance that we kind of went back and forth with. But at the same time, you also found some third options, if you will. And, and this is where it gets really interesting when specifying product. You know, she, she loves Carrera Marble. And you know the challenges that come with a Carrera Marble. So you found, you found an alternative. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's the education. With any of our clients, constantly educating. I think... I mean, every client I've ever worked for, I don't think there's been one that hasn't said, I love Carrera Marble. It, it's, you know, it's like, the, it's the staple, which is great because it is the staple. It, it's something that will be around forever in design. It will never get outdated. It will never get old. It can be paired with literally any design. That's why it's, it's also great to have. Um, so I told her, I said, absolutely. I said, you want Carrera Marble in this house? We can do it. But the caveat is we have to do a porcelain. One, better price point. Two, better durability, and I don't have to worry about it um, fading or staining or having my tile guy come in here and, and, and seal it every year and a half and make sure that we're, you know, there's, there is beautiful Carrera marble. Um, there's places for it, I think, in design, in homes, uh, but there's also places like a bathroom. I don't think it makes sense. It, there's just too much that, that, that can go wrong. And I don't know about all of you, but I've definitely walked through those homes where you go into someone's bathroom, they maybe had a real marble countertop and the water stains have destroyed it. And it's no longer a white, it's a yellow. Um, and everyone says, oh, I can't believe it. Why did that happen? No one told. Well, these are conversations that as a designer, you need to have with your clients. So that's on the product side. And we're going to get a little bit more into that. One of the things that I really wanted to talk to you about today, and I think what we're going to do is we realize that, you know, the conversation is, is one thing and being able to see each other, that's great, but also being able to see the, the project itself as we talk about it is really cool. So Erica, you have photos, thumbs up. I guess we'll go to those in a minute, but what I wanted to talk to you about. I do. First, and I, and I thought now might be a good time to just show that bathroom that he talked about. Yeah. Um, can I just share a couple photos? Please. Great. And then we'll talk through this. So um, as you're looking at this, so that's a porcelain. Right. John, when, when, tell me about when you look at it, do you look at it as if you're looking at a Carrera slab? Or are you it looking at the right. veining? How are you putting this together? Yeah, it looks, when, when you walk into the bathroom, and, and I will just say, because of these photos and what I've done in my house, I've had two clients, I'm doing it in, in their house right now because they, they absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it looks like a full slab. We did the herringbone on, on the floor there, and we did it in, in the niche just to give it a little detail and a little movement. Um, but it looks like a full piece. Um, I can even, you know, if you guys, like I said, also, if you guys want, I can walk people through later and, and show them in person too. Um, but it looks so crisp. It looks great with the black fixtures, really stands out. Um, the vanity in there is a walnut vanity. So we have that wood that warms up the space. 
It's a very mid-century type of vanity that hangs on the wall. Um, and there's nothing like that. That that white is just, it's very, it's powerful. As soon as you walk in, it's bright. The bathroom feels huge. Um, the, the glass door that's now installed in there is a frameless black uh, door. So that, that looks really great with it. Um, it. It's one of those things that you walk into the bathroom, you feel comfortable, you feel at home. And um, it's, it's not something where it's very stark and and, and cold. It actually, I think that the Kerr marble has a feeling of warmth because of the veins that are actually in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting too. Yeah. Um, I love that the choice of black, um, I, it just, it really, it's a reverse pop, right? It just, it really pops against that, uh, that porcelain product. So Josh, we have a very specific question for the porcelain. So before yeah. we move on, I want to address it. And it comes in from Meg and she asks, John, what are you doing for the outside corners with the porcelain, meaning the niche and the shower corners and countertop edges? Yeah, so on the niche, so all I did was, so my, my tile guy asked me, he's like, what he does sometimes is he'll take um, a, a sluter strip and, 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 and he'll put that around. So that, that's one option. Um, I have sluter strips on the sides where it ends that, that, that are black, that, 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 that go up and down on the sides. Um, you kind of, you can't really tell in the picture, but like the bottom, bottom right hand corner, you can just see a piece of, of the black there. Ah, that's, okay. That's there. So that's okay. a, a black. So I have that on the other end. He did say, he's like, do you want to put it around there? I didn't want that. Um, I said, I am fine with just butting it up um, and making it nice and clean. To me, it's a little more of a natural look uh, to, to do that. And that's what I just did in, in the niche area. I did that in my daughter's bathroom too. I just right. butted the tiles up. I didn't do the sluter strip uh, around there. Okay. And one that is caveat that I want to make, uh, Josh, also, what's great about that porcelain, a lot of times people in their bathrooms, uh, they want it to be a home to look. I hear that all everyone wants it. They love Kerm. Well, I'm like, well, now you're now you're going on the crazy side because it is going to be destroyed if you want it honed. Right. This is in a matte finish, and it makes it look even more real than having a polished. Again, it's it's taste. Some people love the polish, some people don't. Having it having it in a matte finish like this, that's another thing that really makes it look like a true real real stone. Yeah, and, and I think what's interesting, here's where the conversation gets really interesting too, because um, two parts to this. The first part is, this gives you the opportunity to, to blend somewhat incongruent styles, right? You get to blend that traditional and a contemporary modern feel to it. And that's really important to do. And I think as we get further into your project, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a bit of a mad scientist when it comes to this. And, and I mean that in the best possible way because, and it, because this was your project, your own project, your home, you know, you had, some, you had some opportunities to take some chances and take a few risks, like one that we're gonna talk about where you actually blend the tile into, into the wood floor. Yes. So tell me, take us through that process a little bit. Because when you look at it, and we'll show the images in a minute, it's not a natural thought to say, you know, we're also linear, right? Where you don't have that organic blending of, of these two non-cohesive materials, but you found a way to make these two work together. Where did this idea come from? So this idea came from back in 2016, um, one of my shows on HGTV was called America's Most Desperate Kitchens. And there was mid-century modern ranch out in California, which there's so many, you know, living out there, you guys know that. Um, this was actually in the Sacramento area, a beautiful community. Um, the, uh, the couple that owned the house, they, it was handed down from their grandfather. So again, great bones, it was awesome had all those things that, that you look for, but it had smaller rooms, the way they designed in the 60s and 70s, everything was smaller rooms. So we opened up the kitchen 
into the living room, into like a little bar area. So now three rooms became one large room, very similar to what I've done here in, in, in my home. And the biggest thing was we were talking to the client, they want the tile um, inside of the kitchen area. The wood, we weren't sure. I mean, I've, I've matched wood before, but they weren't really weren't sure that they, that we could match the stain. And there was a lot of back and forth. So I told them, I said, I said, well, guys, why don't we do um, a play on a mid-century uh, style, you know, go with a, a hexagon tile and bleed it out into the living room area since it's adjacent to it. It's right there. Let's not do uh, a line that separates the spaces. We, we've taken down a wall. Why would we put a line with, with the tile there? That defeats the whole purpose. The whole purpose is to make this flow into each other. When you're, when I tell people all the time, when you're, when you're working and you're, and you're adding rooms together, if you're adding wood, you know, you want the, the wood to run a certain way so it flows and your eye just keeps on going. It, it makes the room look larger. So that was the whole idea behind, behind the tile is don't put a line, have it bleed out. Um, it came out phenomenal. And no, look, I'm going to share those right now because it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and perfect. John used our Ellington collection for this feature in his home. Sorry. So there's there's two types of tile that you used in addition that we're going to talk about here in addition to the porcelain. The, the first was the Ellington and the second was the kaleidoscope. So yep. this is this is the Ellington. And and again, it it looks it's funny because just looking at it, you get that three dimensional pop in the face right and it, yeah. it is it is when you i'm going to show everybody here like inside my home what it looks like when you're in person it is it's trippy it's really wild and it um and it's crazy because you have to there's a, so many things as, as a designer you are doing things specifically for a specific reason you might say to your, so you might put that tile down, the tile by itself, you might not be crazy about it. You might say, mm, man, that's, that is aggressive. I don't know if I can really do that. Well, as a designer, and I already knew this, what, was it, what does it look like? It's, it's changed a couple different times because when I was doing the install, it started to change. Then when we started cutting out the wood, it changed. When we finished it, of course, you see the big wow. Now with furniture, you understand. You're like, oh, I get it. I get what it looks like with furniture. And it looks very different than just, if I took a picture, what you guys have there, there's no furniture. It's just a big empty room. But now with furniture, you're like, oh, a rug, a rug that's down in my living room. Like, oh, I kind of, I, I, I get it. I see where you were going with this. And that is the forethought you have to have because design is, is layered. Everything John, do you remember how many, um, what the square footage was of the tile that you used? Yeah, so that was, so I, I divided it up into thirds and that is 70 square feet, somewhere yeah. around that. So it wasn't, um, and obviously Ellington is one of our more, um, higher end products, but you know, you were able to make quite an impact with not a lot of product. It was just based on how you used it and, and kind of, it was, I don't know. I was very inspired when I saw it. I was super excited with this installation in particular. Thank you. The, I mean, the, the Ellington with the steel. Yes. The, the, which, you know, what's kind of cool is I wanted a Carrera marble because we have it in the back again for, you know, you know, thinking, kind of down the road because I want everything to, to blend. That's why I put a little bit of the Carrera marble there. Um, the steel ones, yes, are a little more pricey, but with the black and gray, since you can see behind me, like, like my door over here, all of my doors and trim are all in a black and gray hue. So um, that's why that's there. And I'll show you guys so you kind of see it in person here. So you can see, so this is my living room area that I just started putting all the furniture. Let me move back so you can kind of see it from there. So you can see the, you can see the living room there. And as you get closer, how it really blends with now my, you know, I, I have my, my rug here. I have my chair, the door, 
the reclaimed wood that, that my wife loves, um, you know, seeing all that kind of come together and how this, and, and how this flows into the wood, you get why it has that big impact coming into the space. Because when you come in, you are seeing all these rooms. You're seeing the sunroom that is behind me. Um, I kept the natural granite fireplace. I still have my mantle that I got to put up. Um, that's original from, from the 1960s home. So you can see as I walk through, not having that line, it goes right into the, the, the entire space here. So that, that was the whole point really be behind it was open up the space. And the way you do that is yes, by taking down walls, but it's also by tricking your eye into thinking, oh, this is even larger than what I thought. So that's, that's kind of, that, that was, that was the, the thought behind the whole process. So, and, and I thank you for that. And because it, it leads into the next question, it's where form follows function, right? So when you put this together, it's not just a pretty face. Cause I was asking you specifically about, are you concerned about two products and how you join them together? But you wound up using a special, a special caulk, and a product that's over radiant heat. So will you talk about how you put, how you came up with the process from bottom up? Yeah, so also one of the things I love anywhere I could put radiant heat, I love putting it in radiant heat. Um, so what I have here is I have, I have a new heat mat that's underneath there. When you're installing tile, of course, you have to put down a concrete board. You cannot put it right on the subfloor because with older homes or any home, it's constantly shifting and moving and you'll get cracks and you'll have issues with the grout later down the line. So with the new heat product, like the Sluder product also, they, they also sell it. Um, it is, uh, it's a plastic membrane roll that gets rolled out uh, onto the floor. In my blog, I did a whole blog series um, on, on the new heat mat where there's pictures and people can see it there when we were doing the install. That is an anti-fracture membrane. So the shifting of the wood and tile you're not going to have to worry about problems or anything down um, in the future of having any issues. So by having that anti-fracture membrane on the floor, I then have a specific caulk that went uh, between the wood and the tile that, uh, that my tile installer recommended. We put that down. I have a thermostat set up there because I have a couple of different areas behind me is all radiant and then all the bathrooms are all, all radiant. Um, and it's, you know, it's something I don't think about. It, you know, it goes in the thermostat, it's Wi-Fi enabled, and it's, it feels amazing when you walk in from the front door, since that is the main entry coming in. Is there anything that can't be Wi-Fi enabled at this point? Yeah, everything's Wi-Fi. I know, right? Um, well, but I, I can talk to my Alexa, and I can have her, she's just, <laughs> um, I can have her turn the heat up uh, in those areas, you know, just by talking, saying, Raise heat hallway, you know, whatever, blah, 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 so. Well, but it's important too, not now in April going into May, but in December going into January, that's going to be really interesting. Yes. And again, well, to see, uh, to see how right you're I just, wanted to, I just wanted to share this image that you'd sent. I know we, we kind of did the walkthrough, but I just wanted folks to be able to see how really um, seamless your installer worked um, over the radiant floors, but also to, to line up with your uh, hardwood, because I think this is really a, a spectacular job on installation. Uh, so I, forgive me for interrupting, but I just wanted to share this image because I think it really drove home that point of installation and, and what you installed over. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it definitely was a, a difficult install and getting his cuts perfect. When you have a, a multi-tool, that's what you use to cut the wood. A multi-tool is, is phenomenal because you can get those nice precision cuts um, that you want. Him and I, all we did was we, we laid everything out. I told him as far as like mixing and matching, he could have fun. I, I can't, you know, the tile installs are artists as well. You got to give them a little go. You know, you, you want to lay it out this way, great. I told him how far I wanted it to come out into the room. I told him how I wanted it to hook uh, going down the hallway. Besides that, he, he just went with it and he did a great job with it. Um, and that's the same time 
as a designer, you have to let those install guys, you know, kind of have their freedom uh, as well. I just I'm sorry, to... Josh. I'm going to step in one more time. I apologize. <laughs> There's just a question on the chat with regards to um, durability of white marble and metal in an entryway. Um, and I think that we just have to remind folks that these are natural products. I think marble's been used as flooring for centuries, perhaps. Uh, so it's got some strong durability. And, um, you know, John looked to his installer to ensure that it was installed properly. Um, so I think it's a, it's a beautiful choice for that use. And um, at the same time, the, one of the things that, 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 that we made sure we did was this was sealed, of course, since it is at, at the entry. Um, that's why I was okay in doing it in a, in a small amount here. That, that was, the, that was the, the push and pull of, all right, I'm not going to do the, the full thing in the bathroom. I'm not going to go with the natural marble here. But in this area, I will go with some of the natural because I can really maintain this. This is something that is much easier to maintain than a larger bathroom where it's, I mean, there's water hitting it every single day. So it's, um, you know, it's kind of, those are the things that you have to be able to kind of work with and think about too when you're picking out your products. As we transition into the other bathroom, that you were working on now this this you were using the kaleidoscope uh product and i think what's really it, this was so much fun because you you use an ombre effect and if we can just take a look at it here can you walk us through sort of what you were thinking what your maybe your wife chose this one but what you were what you guys were thinking when you were putting this together and again you went with the darker fixtures which just really makes it pop and it's beautiful how did you put this together so, so this, this is the style, like th this is all me. She, she, she know this is where I love to step outside the, the box. She likes to stay more, of, you know, the, the white creme, which is fine. Looks beautiful, but stuff like this, this is, I saw this and I was with Lisa in the showroom and she was telling me, John, this just came out. It's brand new. And we were look and we were going through it. And I was like, that's it. I was like, I, I have to have to put that in that is my daughter's bathroom and she loves pink i knew it'd be something she told me she goes daddy i want to have a rainbow bathroom so this was <laughs> as far as a design style and something cool the closest i would go as far as a rainbow um so i love i love the pink the pink also when i saw it there was a play on the, the original bathroom that was in this house because from the 60s, it had pink little chiclet tiles. They were two by two chiclet pink tiles that were this entire bathroom. So, uh, you know, I'm talking to myself, I'm like, look, this is great. Again, it's another play on the home in the mid-century modern, but it's done in a contemporary fashion with the ombre effect and the triangles. And, and I, I love like fun things like this this just makes me smile. I don't know how it can't. It's just like you, you walk in there. It's like one of those bathrooms. You're like, wow, I've never seen that. That's, that's so cool. No, just, you've never seen it. And you, you won't again because you laid this out specifically. This is, this is your, your own design. Yes, it is. Yeah, we took every single, we opened up every box. We laid them on my daughter's floor in the bedroom. And we just went with it. We started from, of course, the, the, the dark pink because that runs up so you have the shower and then it comes all the way down to the floor and then up up by the vanity it goes all the way up up that wall so we laid everything down and came up with our plan of starting from the dark to the lightest pink and then it slowly goes into the white and then when you go down in, into, the, into the floor there's a couple spots of, of pink triangles coming through so that's where it starts to to kind of come and then it goes right back up into the shower area. And my tile guy, like you look at this niche, you can see like even the triangles where he cut them, where it goes into the niche, it's the same exact piece. So that triangle keeps on going. It's not, he didn't just start all over. He actually took the time to lay it out and say, all right, I'm cutting it. It's a three quarter piece, a half piece, whatever it is, that next piece up, it's going to be the same one. So it's, it, it, it's great. It's so cool. John, did, did you let your daughter have input in the layout 
of the ombre? Yeah, she came over. We, I came over. I told her. I said, "You want to?" I said, "You wanted a rainbow." I said, "Dad, this is the closest daddy could could get to a, a rainbow bathroom." Um, and she's like, "She's like, okay, okay." And then we took them all out. And we were playing around with them, and she didn't know. She, yeah, she didn't know what was going on, but it was good. We were we, we put them on the floor, and she had fun. And and um, she's only five, so I think as she gets older, she'll appreciate it more. Maybe I hope. <laughs> well, that, that's sort of that's kind of where I was going with this is that, you know, so much of, of working in design, and again, if this isn't your project, if it was somebody else's project and you're talking to the client, right, and you're explaining to the client, you're actually giving them some ownership of that final product. You're getting their, that buy-in for something that, because I want to back up a little bit, right. there, is, there is equal amount math and art to this, to a, to a layout like this. And I think that the layout was so intricate, right? It, I mean, this, that bathroom, it's not a big bathroom, but it took him, took him a good four to five days, um, to really make good, good progress on it. It was, it, it was the layout. I mean, it was a full day of laying it out, figuring out where you're going to start. Once you get that first layout and you start, yes, it gets a lot easier because you're, you're kind of following it. Um, but like you said, the, the math and design it goes hand in hand. It's, it's something that if you want to step out and you want to do something that's, that's a little different, like the kaleidoscope, because they're individual tiles. I mean, you could do a pattern. I mean, I mean, I am sure people have seen the, the tile before. There's so many cool patterns. You want a, a chevron pattern in there. You, you can do it. Um, you know, you want solid, you can do solid. It, it's totally up to you. But um, when you do individual tiles like this, that's where you really have to have the, the forethought and think a little bit ahead, like, okay, how is this going to pair up with this? And I put this object here. How's it all going to flow? And um, that's, that's really what it comes down to. Curious. Did you run the radiant heat in your bathrooms as well? Yes. You did. Um, did you do that specifically when, when it's cold or did you, when you laid that out, did you imagine that that's something that would get year round use? It's, it gets your, I mean, one living in New Jersey, we are, it's, it's going to be May here in a couple of days. Um, it's cold in the morning. It's freezing in the morning. It's, I wait, we wake up, it's 35 degrees, it's still not warm yet. It won't, it won't get warm, really get warm in, until June um, or at, end of May, depends on the year. It, it always changes a little bit. Um, but the, the heated floors, they're going to be on majority of the year. It's great because this is, um, this is uh, all the radiant floors are a low voltage heat. So you use very, very little energy when you are running any of those floors. Because some people get nervous, like, oh, it's electric. This is low voltage. This is, it's, it, they say when you run it, it's like, it's like running four, four light bulbs. It's, it's almost nothing. Did it add significant cost to the install or was it something that, and I guess the question is if you really think these things through in advance, it doesn't cost much, right? Um, it actually, the product is not that expensive. Um, to me, it's much better to have that underlayment that is the anti-fracture membrane and it's a 10 times easier install because all he's putting down, it roll, it's, it's a plastic roll. It rolls out. It looks like honeycombs that are that, that are on there um it goes down with a thin set that's it on the sub or did you still have to put the concrete on the sub or did you have to put the concrete uh, on the sub on the sub floor. on the sub flooring yeah so so you so you 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 take your thin set you put it down uh, on the sub floor you roll it out the the heat the the uh the electric heat comes in, in a roll it's a it looks like a cord and you literally just fit it inside the grooves. So you run it wherever you want it within there. They give you a certain, uh, you're supposed to follow a specific pattern. They tell you for the size bathroom, it's like a two, three, two pattern. So it gets the rate, you get the, the, the heat evenly across the floor and that's it. Um, my, actually, when I showed, I showed my installer, he goes, this is a lot easier. I don't have to put the concrete board down, the, the cutting of it, the screwing it down. He said, this is a much, much easier. That's brilliant. So, um, sorry to interrupt. The, yeah. Someone is asking if that's a Dietra heat system. 
it is yes so i got new heat um new heat is spelled n-u-h-e-a-t they're a, a canadian company a ditra mat yes it it is that correct so when i when we were talking last week i asked you if there was anything that you might have changed or might have done differently and your answer was let me get in there first <laughs> and i'll tell you and i'm curious now that you're in is there anything that you would have done differently right now there there is not i i really i i am very happy with the choices that we've made here i mean at the same time i mean i am on between television and private clients i mean i, I mean i have over a hundred episodes of television that i've done private clients and, and and for that fact even development projects i mean i have hundreds that i've that i've i've practiced on other people <laughs> so, um, it's so great i've I practiced on a lot of people i've screwed up some homes pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> that's great oh that's hilarious but um, no, look, yeah, I am sure in the next six months, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, I wish we kind of, I, I moved this over. I, doing my house, you, you made a great point. Form and function is something that's so important. And I, and I tell it to my clients when we're, when we're sitting down to our design meetings, because just the, the simplest things where I put an outlet. Why did I put an outlet there? Some people might say, oh, you put an outlet because code says put them every, no. I put an outlet there for a specific reason because I had an audio component that was going to go there, a piece of furniture I knew that would block it. You know, there's a lot of things that, that go into that. And I tried my best um, to really do that here. I tried when I went with my own clients, I really try to do those things with them when we're starting from a fresh start, if, it, if it's new construction or, or a remodel where I'm, I'm redoing the whole room. Um, I really try to go through those elements with them because it makes such a big difference. You're saying, oh, well, why did you, you know, why did, you know, for, for, for my entry, I knew I had this huge mirror that I wanted to go on the stick wood. Um, that's why I put the two flanking lights there. Cause it, it was all, I knew things that I was going to put up before they were there. So that's what I try to do all the time um, with my clients as well. It's sometimes it's, it's hard and sometimes it's, it's a little easier, but that, if you can do that, that makes your design really step above. That's there's, there's design and then there's great design where you say, wow, that person thought of everything. They literally almost, it was them living in the house, but the house wasn't done yet. Um, and if you can do that, that's where you, that's where you really hit. That's you, you hit a, a very high mark. I'm curious too. Um, I, I, I'm really interested in designers as clients. And I was asking you, you know, what, what kind of client are you? And I kind of want to turn the question around saying, you know, now that you've been your own client, yep. what would you like more clients of yours to spend time thinking about instead of necessarily what's new, what's now, what's next, what's most popular? It's, it's easy. It's, it's, it's the planning process. I wish my, I wish my clients realized when they pick up the phone to call me or they want something done, how much time I put in on the back end to make things come out truly a complete cohesive design. Um, I can tell you the latest and greatest. I go to, you know, KBiz and the international builder show every year, all my blogs I follow and, Instagram accounts and seeing it, you know, so many people can do that, right? You can go on, you can go on and look at a ton of blogs. You can look at so much Instagram images and you can see the latest and greatest what people are posting. But the, the planning and forethought, that's really where it gets tricky. Um, especially with tile. I mean, I mean, you know, if, if you are, um, you're spending a lot of money on tile, if you are, are not doing your calculations, correctly, if you're not uh, finding the right installer, um, if, if the bathroom isn't just laid out in the proper manner uh, for, the, for the tile to be installed, uh, you can run into some pretty costly issues. 
Um, and, and that's where as designers, I think is it some designers maybe don't know construction that well. I, I, ha I am lucky enough that I grew up in a construction family. I worked the trades in college as, as a summer job. I mean, in my own house, I did a ton of stuff. I put up all the electrical. I've, I put up all this stuff here. Um, I like doing it. Um, I've been a project manager for many projects, but it, it doesn't, if, even if you don't know all the construction, as long as you are being diligent and you're, and you're trying to learn it and understand it, it, it helps you. It really, it really, really does. And, and that's something as, I think as a profession, we all should, you know, I push myself. I'm the, I'm, I'm a self-taught designer. I, I didn't, I didn't go to school for it. I'm constantly learning um, what goes well together, what, what doesn't work or what I should, I, I, I should look to. Um, so I, I always want to learn. I'm, I, if I can talk to any, any uh, accomplished designer that's at a high caliber, I love to hear what they have to say because I learn something new every day. Absolutely. Hey, Erica, I wanted to just sort of jump over. Were there any questions that maybe we didn't get a chance to touch on yet? There are. There are a couple of questions and they are with regards to the master bathroom. Um, what are you doing for the outside corners with the, oh, did we address that one? The Schluter mm -hmm. strip. That, yeah, the Schluter. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, the it was um, no tile ceiling with the rain shower head. Yep. And um, the second was how did you finish the edge of the shower dam? So maybe you can touch on why you chose no tile for the ceiling. Yep. And so I've done shower. I've done tile ceilings many a times. Um, when I do the tile, I do, I do not like putting the tile. If I'm going to do a tile ceiling, one, I like to have um, a higher ceiling. I, I only have in my entire house, it's only eight, eight foot. Um, so if there's nine foot ceilings, then I will drop down a foot inside the shower area and I'll make a soffit and I'll create in, 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 uh, a little cove of tile. Um, I just did not want to put it there. I really didn't want, I want, I didn't want to drop down. I wanted the same height because it's not a huge bathroom. Um, you know, this, this house is only 1800 square feet. So it's not this massive house where you have wasted room. Everything I did here, like I said, it, ha it has a purpose. So inside the bathroom, I didn't want to drop the ceiling height any more than I had to. I wanted to make sure that it went all the way up and it, and it looked huge. Um, I'm confident with the, um, uh, with the mold resistant board that I put there, I'm not going to have any issues. Um, this I, is, this is a shower for my wife and I, I don't, I don't take the shower and throw it up in the air. Um, maybe a kid would, um, but, um, I'm very confident. I'm not going to have any problems with the steam or anything. I have my fan in there and it, it, right. it should be right. Um, but if I did have higher ceilings in my first master bath in our first house, yes, I did. I had nine foot ceilings. I dropped it down. I made, I made a little cove. I put tile there. Um, it looked great, but I, I had the height. So um, that, that was my reason for, for that area. And then for the shower dam area, again, just like the, um, just like the area uh, for the niche, I had the tiles uh, butt up um, on the joints there and it came out perfect. Um, I could have definitely got a large piece of Carrera marble and, and put it across, but these tiles, my, my tile guys, like I can easily make that, that out of the tile. I said, great, then let's, yeah. then let's do it. And he made it right out of the tile. Really neat. And really it looks, neat. And, it, and it, because those were, um, those are 12 by 24s, it looks like one solid piece. You can't even, you can't even tell. Yeah. Beauty. Great. Thank you. Those okay. were the questions that I had, Josh. Um, okay. But there were two little areas that when we met the other day that John touched on and I wanted to pull them forward if, if, if I may. Sure. <laughs> um, he had two tips. One is the design Bible um, that he mentioned and having a folder for everything. And then the other was finding a through line and for this project, he used raw iron by Benjamin Moore. So I just, those were two little hot tips that I thought I um, found very valuable on Friday. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and just to back up a second. So talking about what two, those two things, 
I think are really important. So thank you, Erica. The design Bible, sort of explain what that is, and also the idea of a through line that, that traveled through, that travels through the entire project. I'm just gonna turn my lights on here because it's getting a little, a little dark here. Um, yes, so, oh, hold on. Uh, I turned the power off there. Um, the one, the the one thing on as far as I guess um, a through line that goes throughout the entire space. Um, I chose the Benjamin Moore wrought iron paint, so that is all my doors and my trim. The reason why I did that was because I wanted a staple that you would see throughout the entire home. So my kitchen cabinets are going to be going in the within the next week um the island is in that wrought iron and then i have a natural wood that are all that is, is the l part of the cabinets behind and i knew if i took a little element of that you know as you can see the you know, the door over there is it my trim um i could really play off of those earth tones and i wanted to have those earth tones run through it or throughout the entire home i love color blocking with pillows and rugs. Um, that's why the, the 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 carpet here is in that that kind of hot pinkish purple. Um, I that's that's my own personal design. I I like doing that. Um, I think you can have more fun with it, and especially with like throws and pillows, you can change up the colors all the time and for different seasons and things like that. Um, so that was something big is having that that through line through the entire space. So when you walk from room to room you see that stuff, you, you understand it, and you're getting, you're, you're getting a cohesive design of the entire house. It's not just one room, it's literally my entire house. You can go to my daughter's rooms, our master, you go to any of the bathrooms, you're gonna see a little piece of that paint somewhere and how it matches up with all of, of the final choices. And then the last thing is, yes, my design Bible. Um, my, my uncle, when we first started doing our construction projects in Hoboken, Jersey City, he used to have these Bibles, our, our construction Bibles for each project. And it was something that was in the office. And if we went to the job site, we took it with us. And it was very important. And I've taken that with me through all my projects. So whether whatever client I have, um, personal projects, I keep it all there. And yes, I have it all in my Dropbox as well. But I love having paper stuff. It's, it's, it just, it's true to my heart. And I like putting samples um, inside of that Bible. I like the, the actual samples themselves. Um, so I have it inside there. Um, notes that, that, I, that I make to myself, all of my cut sheets for anything. So when I walk a job and my subcontractors come up to me and they say, hey, John, I have something in the rough phase. So we're talking the, the rough phase of the project. Um, I also have the other elements of the finish phase right there with my rough because it goes hand in hand. If I don't know, if my subcontractor doesn't know what I'm doing as the final finished product, he might install that, that socket or the plumbing or something in a different manner than what he's accustomed to because he didn't know what I was going to pick. So when I show, hey, look, here's the cut sheet on what's going down here. Let's all review it so you're on the same page. You know exactly what it is. It, it alleviates, I'm going to tell you, a good 75% of the questions that will come in the finish phase because they didn't prep and they didn't know what was going to happen. And it's very, very important. And I think also just it, on the backside of it, if you ever don't, like we don't remember every color we ever used. If you, if you need a color, need a, need a paint style or a paint number or a tile style or a number, everything's there and you know exactly where to find it later. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, I have people all the time asking me, hey, this project I saw you did maybe a year, two, three, five years ago. You know, what, what was that? Co I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm like, guys, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I, I have, a, I have, a, I have a little thought of it, but um yeah, it's, that's exactly what it does. It, it's a great memory. And I like having that because something goes wrong. Look, we, I know computers are great, guys, but, you know, you lose stuff. They, you know, sometimes, you know, things get, you know, unorganized in, in your computer. That's why I like having that, that, that hard binder. And it's kind of a, 
reminder too. When you open it up and you kind of go through it and you see it, you're like, oh, that was a good project. That was, that was, that, that was a fun one. Exactly. So listen, um, we covered a lot of ground here. Thank you so much, John. This was really great. So to visit John, visit him at johncolinari.com. Walker Zanger presents the showroom, Walker Zanger. Thank you so much for doing this, uh, walkerzanger.com. Um, to check out the podcast, Convo by Design, to check out the magazine, Interiors California Magazine. Um, thank you for joining us. Make sure to uh, check your emails for the next showroom. John, thank you very much, man. You were awesome. Really no, appreciate thank it. You guys. Th thank you for having me. Um, I just, I do want to say working with the Walker Zanger team, Erica, Lisa at the showroom, seamless. Um, really made my life very easy. Whenever we do these projects, it is um, it's a major team effort. And yes. uh, if you don't have a good team around you for every aspect, believe me, we have a lot of different people that are going into these building projects. You know, one person could um, take take the wheels off pretty fast. So uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us, um, spending your time with us. Be well. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.